Hello, this is Bill Grunenberg for All Space Considered. You've probably already heard about this very successful NASA mission called DART, which was in the news on September 26th when it smashed into an asteroid 7 million miles from Earth. I want to share some uh, more details of this really, really successful mission. First, DART, of course, is an acronym. It stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. This was the first ever planetary defense demonstration. Um, planetary defense, of course, you might your mind might lead to science fiction. It's not defense against alien invaders. It's defense against just really big rocks that might totally, completely ruin our day. Uh, we all know what happened to the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. We don't want that to happen to us. The impact that you read about was not to smash the thing. We weren't trying to blow it up. We were just trying to alter its orbit. And the uh, craft itself was about a 1260 pound thing about the size of a vending machine. And it took a 10 month trip to get to this point in space. And then uh, it collided intentionally with this uh, asteroid called Dimorphos at a speed of about four miles per second. And Dimorphos is one of uh, two asteroids that are in a binary system. They orbit each other. And the larger one is called Didymos. These asteroids, like I said, are, well, they're actually about 6.8 million miles from Earth when we intercepted them. Of course, everything's moving, so that's changed since then. But that's how far away they were when we got to them with this uh, the spacecraft. So that makes them close enough to be pretty observable, but far enough away that something goes wrong and a big chunk goes flying toward us, you know, that won't happen. I mean, the, the, there, it's far enough away that that wouldn't be a problem. The Dimorphos is the smaller uh, asteroid. That was the target of DART. It's only about 530 feet in diameter. And Didymos is the larger object at about 2,560 feet in diameter, or about maybe half a mile, which is small compared to planets and moons. I just want you to imagine taking on the job of sending a spacecraft into space, hitting a moving target like Dimorphos that's only, you know, a little over 500 feet wide going and, and 7 million miles away and uh, moving at it at a speed of about four miles per second. That just feels impossible to me, but they hit it like bullseye. It was almost exactly dead center that they hit this thing. And uh, one thing that helped is they had they built in internal guidance uh, inside the craft, which they kicked in at about 56,000 miles away from the asteroid. So it guided itself very with very minute adjustments all the way to the object. And that's what made it uh, so successful. So why did we want to crash a spacecraft into an asteroid? Well, it's this uh, planetary defense strategy called kinetic impact. The idea is that if we detect an asteroid that could be a threat that's a great distance away, and we can just nudge it just a tiny little bit, not even a huge amount. By the time it gets to us, it will no longer be heading toward us. The distance will increase little by little, and then it'll eventually miss us by a wide margin. So that is the idea of this particular uh, defense strategy, is just a little nudge at a great distance away. Um, so the main uh, spacecraft, of course, sm smashed into Dimorphos. But uh, before that, about 15 days before it, uh, it uh, made the impact, there was an Italian-made uh, CubeSat, basically, that uh, separated from the main craft and hung back. And it watched everything happen. And we're actually starting to get images from that, which I'm showing you now. And um, it, it watched, it, 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 can, it actually sort of uh, photographed the plume of the material and got some more information that would be very helpful. So in addition, of course, there have been lots and lots of uh, worldwide ground-based telescopes that have been observing the two space rocks to measure their orbital period around one another, which is about 11.9 hours. That's how long these two objects take to orbit one another, at least pr prior to the impact. It's, 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 expected that, it's expected that the new orbital time will be about 1% shorter. We push the thing a little bit closer to the smaller object, to the clo closer to the larger object. And so it's probably gonna be a, take about 10 minutes less than that original 11.9 hours. Um, but it's gonna take a couple of months of study to really pin that down. Um, 
Of course, before and after the impact, there have been a lot of ground-based telescopes looking at the, these objects and trying to determine their um, the orbital period. And even James Webb Space Telescope, I understand, is going to uh, spend some time imaging these asteroids. Now, the way they detect the orbital period is based on this periodic eclipse that happens. One of them passes behind the other. With asteroids, which are tiny, 7 million miles away, and they, they're not like stars, they don't make their own light, they only reflect what light they can. Um, they, it's hard to see them well enough to distinguish the two. You can't actually see them orbiting one another, even with very powerful telescopes. So what they use instead to determine that or orbital period is what we call light curves, light curves. And if you've watched the show before, you've seen us uh, talk about exoplanet hunting. And one of the ways they find exoplanets, planets that circle other stars, is with light curves. Because if you have a star here from your point of view, and then a planet over here that passes in front of it from your Earth point of view, that little planet is going to block just a little bit of the light of this star as it goes by. So you see the light curve moving along like this from the star, and then it dips a little, and then the object moves away and it comes back up again. And that light curve is the same sort of thing that will happen with the two um, asteroids, because the smaller one is eclipsed periodically. Every time it goes around, it passes behind the larger uh, asteroid from our point of view. And so what happens is you have all the light being reflected by the larger asteroid and all the light being reflected by the smaller asteroid until it gets behind the bigger asteroid. And then there's a little bit less light, the amount of light that um, the smaller asteroid reflects. So you're gonna see a dip in the light curve. And then they just judge how, how long it takes for that to happen each time. And they, tell, they can tell therefore uh, what the orbital period is. So everything lined up just right for this to happen. Now, the European Space Agency, this was a NASA mission. The European Space Agency is going to launch a mission in October of 2024. This mission is called Hera. That's right, more Greek mythology. And uh, that'll arrive at the asteroids in about 2026. And it will take better images uh, of the crater left by um, the DART mission. And all this will help us to understand even better how effective this uh, kinetic impact technique of uh, asteroid redirection might be. Now I'm going to let the DART mission team take over, and you can see the final couple of minutes of approach of DART as it impacts the asteroid Dimorphos. Dimorphos, and we hope into the history books. Absolutely. This will be, I'm sure you've heard it many times tonight, uh, humanity's first ever ever attempt at trying to move another celestial body and also our first attempt ever to execute a, uh, a mission in you know, sole purpose of planetary defense. So what an exciting, exciting time. Yeah, and I'm starting to see Dimorphos start to come into view there. You can see it starting to take shape. I'm starting to see individual boulders on Didymos. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable is, clarity yeah, of maneuver. images We're there. Coasting on in, our projected missed distance is going to be about 17 meters. All right. <laughs> All eyes on this event, space telescopes, ground telescopes from every continent on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Two minutes out. Does not look like one single rock to me. Oh, boy, we're getting close. 14,000 miles per hour, Lori. 14,000 miles per hour. And remember, you know, uh, 45 minutes ago, 55 minutes ago, we couldn't even resolve this this object in space. And now we are, you can see us zeroing in right on target. And we're now dropping the clock and we'll go by loss of signal to confirm impact. Right. Yes. Imagine we'll get that loss of signal and then we'll hear from Lena Adams again. Um, letting us know that we've like been we'll successful. Know. I feel like that'll be a crystal clear <laughs> signal. I think so. I think we're starting to see more, uh, more resolution. In fact, look at that. Didymos has even gone out of the view. We're now just seeing Dimorphos. This is remarkable stuff. Oh my goodness, look at that. Looks like control system settling down. Angular rates look really good. I think we're going to get the investigation team some good pictures. Wow. No, no, come on. We can do better than that. 
Oh. Starting to see those individual boulders there. You can see shadows of uh, various rocks on the surface. It's amazing, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Looks to me like we're headed straight in. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Eight, yeah. seven, oh, six, wow. five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. We're getting visual confirmation. All right. Let's see. We got it? Waiting. Waiting. And we have an impact. A family personality in the name of planetary defense. Woo.